Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Recap 2021. I'm Sebastian from the uh, CUP team, and I have the honor to announce our next session, given by Leo Van Hengel and Kushal Mukashi, um, both consultants from Reply, uh, first time on stage uh, for Recap, as most presenters today. And they will give an interesting talk about the, uh, about the orchestration of micro front ends with uh, several components, actually. One is the SAP Luigi framework for the orchestration part, one is Microsoft Azure. Active Directory for the authentication part. Then we, of course, they use CAP for the backend service part and then UF5 for the front end. So interesting mix. Uh, looking forward to your session, guys, and I hand over to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to our session. Uh, I will first uh, share my screen. Uh, and I will start with uh, a couple of slides. Not, not too much. Uh, we don't want to see much slides, but uh, yeah, first uh, we will explain a bit more about Luigi and maybe it's uh, new for some people in this uh, round and uh, yeah, Kushal will explain more about it. Also about Azure AD and then uh, after that, uh, uh, yeah, we will quickly go to the coding and the demo. So UI5 and CUP, I think we don't have to explain in much detail. We just show the code to you guys. Okay, Kushal. You can... Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so I'll just explain like in uh, one slide, like what is Luigi uh, micro front end? Um, so it's an architecture diagram of the uh, Luigi. So it has two parts, uh, basically Luigi core and the Luigi client. And the communication between the client and core can be done through um, dedicated APIs, uh, what they have designed. Uh, so it is used for uh, orchestration of uh, different uh, micro front ends, uh, breaking of your monolithic uh, applications into different um, micro front ends. Uh, so different micro front ends constitute uh, a Luigi client and then uh, Luigi core uh, is a main uh, config file uh, where you communicate to the outside world uh, of different databases backend uh, and so on and then the communication can be done through uh, the APIs. And um, other stuff which we used uh, is Azure AD uh, in our app. Um, so this is the authentication uh, flow diagram, um, what we used uh, for in our application. And then as you know, so it's Azure Active Directory uh, where we used uh, this for authentication uh, part as a third party auth uh, authentication part. And it supports um, OIDC uh, protocol and OR2.0 implicit grant flow for authorization. So as you can see also on the screen, uh, this is the, the flow. Uh, so the browser is the one which user are using and then the web server uh, is our uh, backend. So when the user navigates, uh, when we use this uh, auth uh, Microsoft AD uh, authentication part, this is how the flow will be. So when the user clicks on or goes to the uh, app, uh, the endpoint, uh, he will direct navigate to the web server and then that will redirect uh, you to the authentication uh, screen with the with for entering the user credentials so um, and that will be done through providing a client id and all uh, in the azure ad setup which will show uh, in, in in some time and then when the user enters all the credentials uh, and uh, gives the consent uh, to some permissions uh, then that will call will go to this endpoint OAuth2v2.0authorize. That's the endpoint of the Azure AD. And then, then it will uh, returns an ID token to the browser and the browser takes that ID token and will it will redirect uh, and send that to a web uh, server uh, redirect URI. This redirect URI also you will uh, configure in the when you're registering your app in Azure AD. And once you get this ID token at the back end, that, that at that point you can use this uh, ID token and then build different logics uh, on, on use, using those uh, ID tokens uh, because that contains uh, different informations. And then you can build like an access, uh, role-based access and so on. And then you, you can show the secure page uh, to the user or whichever page uh, as a business logic demands. So now we'll go and then show you the, the coding uh, and the demo part. Yeah, thanks, Kushal. Uh, I will switch to my... 
So yeah, uh, we built, uh, for to show you all these technologies, we built a small demo application. Uh, it's like simple application uh, where a person can log, log in and get his own details uh, and also his team details. So first I will show you the, the version which doesn't have authentication. So in this version, it's without the Luigi authentication part and also the, the backend security is not implemented yet. Um, yeah, it's a couple of things are hard coded in this application. So I load it, uh, I immediately see my own details. It does a query to the cop service with my ID, which I hard coded in the UI5 app. And uh, also a list, uh, my team list will be displayed. So these are all the uh, members of my team uh, and they will be displayed to all, all of them currently. So, uh, in the other application where we activated all the stuff, so we activated authentication, we configured Luigi and uh, also the backend services. I will show you that now. So this is demo with authentication. And here you see, as soon as we hit the first page of Luigi, the index.html, it's the, the Azure flow will be triggered. And then I can log in. So I have set up two different roles. So for my own user, if I log in, I will only get my own details. So now it's really uh, retrieving the details for my own user. No more hard coding. Um, person details will display my own details. And since I'm an employee, I only get this Luigi micro frontend app. So this is, yeah, you see the Luigi framework here. It's, it's like a portal where you can embed different app micro frontends. Uh, and currently, as I'm, I have the role employee, I only get access to this person details uh, application to only edit my own application details. If I now log out and log in again, and then I will log in with Kushell's credentials. I know his password for this uh, instance. You'll see, okay, he will get his own welcome message. Welcome Kushell. Uh, you will see his own person details. And here you'll see the role. He's a manager and he's a manager of business unit one. And because of that, because he has the role manager, he also get access to the other application in Luigi and my team. And there he will see all the members or employees of his team, so of his unit. So at first, when we looked at an authenticated access, we see everything, all from other business units, all the employees. Currently, Kushal is a manager of business unit one. He sees only his employees there. And that's also, he can add employees and he can edit his employees. So, okay, yeah, now it's time for the good parts and show you the coding for this. So uh, I will first show you this. Um, Oh, I have to show my other, I have two instances of VS Code. Uh, yeah, this one. So this one is the, uh, the one auto unauthenticated version. So the structure of our app is uh, typical to a cup application. So we have the app folder where we do our UI5 coding. I will explain some more later. Uh, we have the service folder and the DB folder, of course. Then for Luigi, we added uh, Luigi configuration. And yeah, Kushal will now explain some more details about that and how we add the authentication part. Yeah, thanks, Leo. Uh, so as Leo explained, so this is a structure uh, of, of, of our app. Uh, and then you see like there's a Luigi uh, folder where this is the main Luigi config file. And then this is where the trigger uh, happens when, when we uh, load this index.html uh, file. So it will in, like directly uh, loads this uh, Luigi uh, config file. And then in that, um, with a simple configuration file with uh, key value pairs. Uh, and then you can see there is navigation, routing, settings, uh, and, and then so on. Uh, there are like different uh, options uh, available, uh, like lifecycle hooks, um, and then resetting the config and so on. So in the navigation, you can set a different node, uh, node like tree of nodes, and then you can set the path uh, segment 
home and then what we uh, like url and its children um, and then the icons uh, there are so many options here so this is where we we define the kind of navigation nodes and the path and then uh, there is a this uh, routing yeah different options like you can uh, boolean true or false using hash routing and then the settings uh, for the for the header and which logo to use um, responsive navigation options uh, and so on so here if you observe uh, we are not using any auth so this is the uh, the instance of the app uh, where we are not using uh, the authentication so it's just like one simple file uh, and then you just put all the things here and and then then you run uh, the, the 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 micro front the different ui applications will be uh, embedded as a micro front ends and then using this uh, luigi uh, framework now i will show uh, the the other instance of the visual studio code where with we used authentication uh, leo can you open yeah, I'm sorry, I will switch. Uh, I see the, the view yeah. is not on your screen. Uh, yeah. yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, so like here, if you see uh, the difference in that uh, part is in this Luigi um, config file, we have Okay, uh, we have uh, this auth. So uh, this is where this authentic, this whole authentication stuff we do. And then we did some modularizing approach uh, where we put different navigation in a different file and then notes in a different file and we call it. Uh, so this auth part, uh, if you see here, so this is the authentication part. And then we are using the OAuth2 implicit grant flow. And then we, we are mentioning like which IDP provider uh, we are using and then this is where the the URL that is authorized URL, which you you saw uh, in the in the architecture diagram, that where it, it goes and this is where it talks to, and then log out you are like you URL where what HTML to load, uh, and this is the auth uh, data mainly, and the the response what you get uh, from the Azure AD is the ID token, in, in form of a token that is ID token. And this is the client ID which you have to give. And this client ID, you will get it when you register your app in um, Azure AD. And then you can define the scope. Uh, this is a default scope, which presently we took, there are different options uh, also in the Azure AD. And of course, a user has to uh, agree to those uh, permissions uh, whenever he wants to provide which data that is uh, the scope. And we use the user info function where we are passing this uh, the token uh, data and then um, decoding it and then uh, getting that email ID uh, and the name and then uh, using that and passing that onto the backend. That's a cap part uh, where we are uh, using that particular email ID to uh, do a role-based authorization part and also using that to uh, authorize uh, or protect the, the services uh, and yeah this this is the pass passing the function and then there's a logout function yeah so this, this is the main important stuff like here in luigi uh, part and then you can see other part in this file is lifecycle hooks which was not there in the without authentication so here once we get this authentication done so then we are reloading this changing that Luigi config changed and just reload the navigation. So if there is no authentication, the whole navigation tree will be loaded without any constraints and so on. Now we are saying that, okay, once our uh, authentication is done and authorization stuff logic in the backend is done, then you just reload this only navigation part. So it's a nice feature that you can reload only some part of the the, the Luigi config file. Not you don't you don't need to like reload whole uh, config file. Um, and then if you see in the navigation now, uh, yeah yeah this this is the navigation. Then this is the nodes which we use it in the navigation. 
file. So here you can see uh, two more extra stuff that is uh, we are using the context. We can define the context between this Luigi client and the core and the user info is the context and there are different constraints. Uh, this you can define like, okay, employee and manager will be able to see and then okay for this only manager will be able to see uh, and, and so on. Uh, now I will just quickly show uh, another part uh, of the Azure AD. Uh, can you uh, open? Yeah, one moment. So, uh, sorry, I'll take the mouse. Uh... Ah, yeah, now I'll be able to see that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So just quickly show how you can just register the app in the Azure AD uh, part. Uh, so this is the, you have to log in into your Azure uh, cloud. Uh, and then you can go to this Azure Active Directory uh, part, and then there you can go uh, app registration. So when you go into the app registrations, we have option to register your new uh, application. Uh, and then we have already registered here. And when you register your application, you will get this app client ID or application ID, which we saw in the code, which we had written or copied this. Uh, this is important, and then um, that's it. So it's like so so quick and easy stuff. Uh, so you just try to register your application. You get this ID, use this, and then in the authentication part, you just have to give the redirect URI so that uh, Azure will know where it has to send the ID token back to you. So in which which uh, URI? So it will come for us. It will come back to now call back uh, dot HTML files. That's where it sends, and then from there we read. Uh, and so on, and then you can specify storage types, local or the session. So yeah, this is from the authentication part and the Luigi uh, point of view, uh, the application, and then now Leo will explain a more interesting uh, cap uh, and then how, how how the authorization and the services part done. So what yeah. do you do? Thanks, thanks, Kushal. Uh, yeah, Kushal showed uh, how to, to do the authentication in Luigi, and I will now show uh, how we uh, implemented that in the backend. So, in the backend services, uh, quickly go to our schema. Uh, yeah, we have these persons and units, like two simple entities, and, and the role is also one of the fields here. Um, in our uh, services, then we, yeah are exposed as usual, but we added this annotation, uh, add uh, requires authenticated user. So to access any of the services, the, the user has to be authenticated. Uh, some configuration for that has to be done in the package.json. So in the package.json of the file, we have to implement here this custom auth.js file. And so the implementation uh, once we add this, uh, of this uh, annotation requires authentication, it will always, for every request, will for be forwarded to this old JS file. And I have to say, uh, I took uh, lots of code from this from Gregor. So Gregor, thank you for your examples. I think you had an uh, example with uh, Active uh, Directory a, a B2C uh, authentication. And actually we used a lot of code from your uh, example. Um, so yeah, in this OJS file, uh, we are uh, implementing some node uh, packages. So uh, Azure AD passport and the normal passport uh, to, to, to get this authentication uh, passed on to the, to the user. Uh, for the UI5 app, I will show you later that uh, how I call these services because to call these services, of course, I have to pass on this access token, which we got from Azure AD. Uh, we will pass it on to every call to the backend. So all the OData service calls from uh, Luigi or the UI5 apps actually who are doing the calls, they will be uh, authenticated uh, by passing this uh, bearer token. And what happens here then is that, uh, yeah, there's some uh, code here to check that token. So if everything, if this authenticate, authenticate method is successful, you get the token in here. And then from that token, again, we, we get the email address. And yeah, with that email address, uh, we do a query to our own database because we have defined our uh, roles in the database file. So in the entities, we have implemented it there. Uh, plan is maybe uh, later to also move this to Azure. So in Azure to define your roles over there and then get that FIDA token. 
but currently in our version of the app, we have the roles defined in the in the backend. So what we do with this email address, which we get from the token, we do a query to uh, to our uh, person's entity and check if there's a user with that email address. If so, we will get the data from him and mark him as an authenticated user. So we push this in the in the roles of this authenticated user. And we also get the role from the database. So we mark him as authenticated user, but also as an employee or a manager, whatever his role is. So, uh, and then based with that, so when that stuff is then implemented in the service itself. So here in the services we created for those entities, uh, for example, uh, the person creates that's then only allowed for uh, employee. So we check here is the user, this is a role check, is the user uh, employee, then we reject him. He cannot create uh, any persons. Uh, for other stuff as well, uh, update, okay, we check, that's uh, my, kind of like a check uh, to build in that the user cannot change his email address because the email address is really a key for us. So if the user in the database, his email address is, doesn't exist anymore, then of course he cannot log in anymore to the application. So they always have to match. Uh, uh, yeah, for the persons, we do another check. So uh, based on uh, the role, is he employee? We, uh, we will give him uh, only his own data. So we restrict his data. We do that in the before event. So before the red is, uh, the red is called, we check, okay, this user can only request his own data. For the manager, so as the role with Kusho I showed you, we will check his user uh, unit ID. So that way we restrict the list of employees he sees uh, in, the, in the demo here. So here we only see business unit one, and that's because we do the call here. Yeah. And not everything he sees there. Um, yeah, that's actually the part in, in COP we built. Um, and then this last part, the UF5 apps. Yeah, the UF5 apps, which are all in the app folder and they're differently called. So the home app is just a simple app with not much detail, uh, with only the welcome message. And the welcome message is actually read from the Luigi context because we, in the context, we also have the user details. So we just display the first name. There's no OData calls in this app application. Uh, in the person details, so similar uh, basic UI5 application structure uh, with the manifest. Uh, we use the OData v2 version here. Uh, and yeah, in the components, we uh, pass the bearer token. So we initialize the OData model and we get the token from the Luigi client because that's where, the, where it's available once the authentication has happened. And we pass it on to the backend service. Um, and then in the detail controller, uh, let's see, yeah, I, I have of course the Luigi context, so in the, in the an authenticated app, this is hard coded, but here we get the ID from the context again, and we call the person's entity with that uh, call here. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, just want to show you maybe. So we've seen everything now. Oh, uh, sorry, I have to. Yeah, so this is our architecture diagram. Uh, I think we've shown you now everything that uh, everything is happening. Uh, the communication between Azure with the micro front ends to the different apps, to the OData, then I uh, see spelling mistake also, Postgres. Um, and yeah, the communication. So this is our demo app. Um, then the last thing, the, uh, this demo app we just showed you is, is very a simple application with person details and manager role. Uh, internally in uh, Cisco Plan, we also uh, developed a vacation planner based on this functionality with COP. 
uh, with some more different roles. So an employee role, a uh, uh, business unit manager role, and a, a partner function. So for example, you see here uh, a person his own vacations and a manager function. He can see all his employees and the partner functions can see his all business units. So everything, there's even four different roles in this application though. So that's a bigger application we developed internally and which is currently live and used in uh, Cisco plan. That's it from our side. Um, thank you very much for watching. And yeah, if there's any questions, we're happy to answer them. Yeah, thank you all. Thanks a lot, uh, Leo and Kushal. Really a great session. Thanks so much. There were some questions uh, in the question tool. Let me uh, ask you one or two and try to be brief as the next session is about to, to start soon. Um, the first one was, what are the main advantages in using micro frontends? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually uh, micro frontends are, are, are used in bigger teams. So in, in bigger teams where applications need to be developed in, in bigger teams, they say, okay, you can use micro frontends to separate uh, your applications uh, and, and don't have dependencies. So you can embed in, in Luigi different kinds of applications and develop them uh, all standalone. And if somebody updates an application, another team doesn't have to be involved. They all can be standalone. Of course, for the real framework to, to make this integration and authentication happen, there's a bit more needed. Uh, yeah, that's one of the advantages. Uh, and the project management point of view also. So it's, it's, it's completely independent. You can do the complete flow. So development, testing, deployment, like not dependent on each of the uh, micro front and each of other apps. So each individual micro front end itself is an app. So it is. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Right. Maybe one brief one, and then I think we can continue in the question tool or in the app, in the evening session. Um, is Luigi similar to the Fiori launch app service? Uh... I've not really used the Fury launch app service, but uh, I, I think Luigi can also be used for other technologies. So yeah, it's, yeah. you can embed Angular, React, whatever you like, uh, your own applications. I'm not sure if that's possible with Fury app launch service, uh, if you can only embed Fury apps there. Yeah, yeah it's a technology agnostic, uh, Luigi, yeah. All right. Great. Um, then, yeah, thanks again to both of you. Uh, both of you would be great if you can continue answering some questions in the tool on the evening uh, event. Thanks a lot, and looking forward to the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the, very much. Thank you.